The FDA recently issued an emergency use authorization for convalescent plasma as a treatment for COVID-19. Many top health officials are against this because we don't have evidence of a clear benefit. There's a lot to unpack here, including study flaws and misrepresented data, so we decided to go ahead and unpack it for you. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. First of all, what is convalescent plasma? As you may know, your immune system would generate antibodies to COVID-19 if you were to become infected, but it wouldn't happen overnight. The production of antibodies takes somewhere between one and three weeks following infection. Once those antibodies are present, they hang out in plasma, the liquid part of your blood. Here they spend their time patrolling for their respective pathogens with the intent to kill them. When you donate plasma, those antibodies can be isolated from it and used to treat other people in the early stages of infection. The idea is that your antibodies would fight the virus for them until their own immune system had enough time to build up its own. So does it work? Quite possibly. This kind of treatment has been successful in the past. Is it the miracle we've been hoping for? Mm, quite possibly not. While much of the FDA's emergency use decision hinges on a large study run by the Mayo Clinic, that study has yet to be peer reviewed and has no placebo group because the foremost intent was to get the treatment to patients. That's fine, but it makes it difficult to interpret the results, which we'll cover now. To the research. 35,000 hospitalized patients received convalescent plasma donated by recently recovered COVID-19 survivors, after which researchers measured seven and 30-day mortality rates. According to the preprint, the seven-day mortality rate in patients transfused within three days of diagnosis was 8.7% whereas the mortality rate in those transfused four or more days after diagnosis was 11.9%. At 30 days, those mortality numbers were 21.6 and 26.7%. The researchers also noted a dose-response relationship with lower mortality rates among those receiving plasma with higher antibody levels. So while it's hard to draw any solid conclusions without a placebo group, we might cautiously lean toward the therapy being somewhat beneficial. But with no appropriate control to compare things with, we'd reserve judgment until an appropriate trial were conducted. This is clearly distinct from the recent pronouncement of the FDA chief that the therapy would save 35 lives for every 100 people receiving it. While he did eventually walk that back, it's still incredibly disturbing to myself and many other scientists that the difference between absolute risk and relative risk got mixed up at this level in a pandemic where misinformation is rampant and critical public trust is already a little frail. If you've been watching Healthcare Triage for long, you're probably familiar with the relative versus absolute risk lecture. The FDA commissioner was referring to a 35% relative risk reduction, which doesn't represent clinical reality nearly as well as the absolute risk reduction, which was somewhere between 3 and 5%. That's a big difference. It doesn't mean the treatment is worthless, but it does mean that important data were not communicated in an honest and transparent way, something that is always critical, but perhaps more so in a pandemic. Possibly impeding public trust even further, all of this comes on the heels of the FDA pausing the emergency authorization after top health officials from the NIH cautioned that available data wasn't solid enough to make the call. And on a final note, the emergency use authorization could end up making it difficult for us to get a definitive answer on how useful convalescent plasma really is. That's because we need randomized controlled trials, but it's harder to enroll people in those if the treatment is widely available elsewhere. It has already been difficult to conduct these trials thanks to plasma shortages and other factors, so another roadblock makes it just that much harder. This is truly unfortunate because these trials are critical to our ability to piece together a clear picture of our defenses so we know where to direct our energy and resources to offer ethical and effective treatments to ailing patients and to start digging ourselves out of this mess. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on rethinking testing. It's also really helpful if you like and subscribe down below. And if you go to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show even during the pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Josh Gister, and Michael Chin, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.